Hello and welcome to this very special Halloween edition of Junk Journal with me. This is Barbara from Vienna, Austria. And as you may have read in the title, I challenged the wonderful Irid Landgraf, and I will tell you more about her in a moment, to also do a journal page with some digitals that um, she could choose and I choose my own. I don't know what she chose, but we would both do a Halloween spread for you guys. And I had so much fun with this episode. So I hope you guys really enjoy watching this as much as I enjoyed making this spread. So these digitals you see here are the ones I chose and these are from Victoria Designs. And of course, I'm going to link these below. And I also, because it was so hard to choose, I also chose another kit or another page. It's just one page. This one is from Heavy Feathers Designs and I will also link those below. So some of these are what I will be working with today for my spread, which I will do in Allison's journal. And I'm going to start off by cutting everything out and I'll be right back. So while you watch me score and fold some of, some of these envelopes and pockets, um, let me tell you a little bit about Irit. So I had the pleasure of meeting Irit in our last meetup that we had in Vienna and I was very excited to meet her because it was the first time actually that I met another YouTuber who also enjoys paper crafting. So that was really a highlight for me. So hi Irid, if, I'm sure you're gonna be watching this obviously. <laughs> and so Irid is actually, her background is scrapbooking. And she has, as far as I can see from her videos, kind of evolved to more of journaling, junk journaling, traveler's notebooks, that kind of thing. And her videos are a lot of fun. So I will link her video down below as well. So as I said, she's also doing a Halloween spread today. And um, yeah, so I don't know which did she, she chose. I have no idea what she did. I'm sure her journal page is very different than mine, but um, I hope both of them will be very enjoyable for you guys. So here I am still scoring the envelopes and I printed everything except those cards from Heavy Feather Studio on regular copy paper. The reason being that I wanted to put them in Allison's journal and Allison's journal is already getting bulky and I don't want that journal particularly to become a gator mouth. So that's why I chose that option. So now I had to cut in this slit for the closure and I did such a horrible job on that. <laughs> like, how badly can you mess up cutting a straight line? Yep, I can do it. <laughs> so, and I folded things crooked because I think I scored crooked. I don't know what was going on. Anyway, so here, even though they look inked already from the design, I still had to ink some more. And I'm also inking the white parts that I think we're going to show because um, white was not going to work for me at all. So after doing that, I'm just gluing this little pocket together. It's actually a tea bag, which is a lot of fun. And I've actually used these for goodies for um, Happy Mails as well and actually put in a tea bag. And this is so fun. So these little pockets are very versatile. And... The design is awesome. So trying to straighten what I had messed up before, which worked out in the end. And now I'm gonna see if I can actually close it. And that looks great. So that pocket is done. So there were three different ones. So I'm just, I just chose this one. And now I had to also do the same thing with the envelope. So I'm just also inking it up and also inking up the white parts. 
all the parts that I think maybe you could see even though it's glued up. Yeah, and there it's glued. Beautiful envelope, love it so much. And this one with the bat is beautiful as well, but I decided not to use that. And to put in the pocket, I decided to use this photo of me, six years old, in New York, my first Halloween ever. And so that was what I wanted to journal about. So I just printed that out on some 160 GSM paper. And I'm going to just back that with some beige 200 GSM cardstock using my beloved new 3-in-1 glue, which is also linked below in case you are looking for that and you can't find it locally. Now I'm just burnishing it. And it fits perfectly. And then I realized actually that that cardstock had a line there and that was not going to work for me. <laughs> the perfectionist in me is calling. So I cut out a coffee dyed paper and I'm just obviously going to ink that up and then also glue that onto, back, onto the back of that cardstock. And then I wanted to um, stamp some kind of a border on the top just so it wasn't so plain. And these stamps are from AliExpress. I cannot promise that I can link them because last time I think I looked for them and I couldn't find them. And here I wanted to show you a little trick that I do if I don't want the stamp to go all the way to the borders. I will just use some washi so that the ends stay blank. You will see how that looks like and it, it looks really like the stamp is, is a lot smaller than it smaller than it is and I love the way that looks. So that's a little trick for you if you have stamps that are bigger than your piece of paper. And now I'm going to journal about um, this um, Halloween. So I just wrote Bronxville, New York. I was six years old and this was our first Halloween ever. Oh my god, we had so much fun and I can't believe how much candy we got. This will always truly be a sweet memory. Okay, so this was going to go into this pocket and this is our first piece that we will later add on to our Halloween spread. Next, we're going to look at this envelope and while one side is beautiful, the other side is very plain. And so perfect space to make a little collage because I think you guys are enjoying my collages. So let's just do another one here. And so these are the cards I printed from Heavy Feather Studio. And I'm going to choose a small one, or oh, actually I already chose it. Um, the one that says Poison Ivy. And so that's gonna be the main focal point of this envelope. And then I choose another bit. And I really like this raven, but I didn't want the whole card, so I decided to fussy cut this raven. And I will ink that up as well. Surprise, surprise. And next I'm looking in my small ephemera book. And I am choosing one of Nick the Booksmith's labels. And I had a question about where to get these. Um, I thought she had them on her Etsy store. I got them from taking one of her classes. It was, one, it was a part of that class, of the bookmaking class. But I thought she would have them in her Etsy. I will check that again. I can't imagine that they're not there. But I'll check again. And then I thought perfect to use these stickers that were from the last subscription box from your creative studio i do have a video of the unboxing of that which i will link below in case you want to see it and what a better i mean what could be a better day to use these spooky stickers than for halloween 
So I decided to go for this beautiful glass bottle and gla like wine glass because we're talking about poison ivy drink. So I thought that went really well. And now I'm taking my beloved grid washi which is from AliExpress and I will link that below as well because I wanted it to have a little bit of a more interesting background. And so I was loving how that was turning out. And then I found this washi in my collection, which I believe is also an AliExpress one. And it had some spooky images on it and some Halloween images. And look at this great pumpkin. So another perfect piece for this collage. So I'm trying to decide for the perfect spot. I put him right there. Next, I'm using some Tim Holtz Washi, one of my favorites. And this one comes in a set that I got on Amazon. He has two sets and I will link both of his sets below. I love both of them, but I think this Washi is, is in particular my favorite of the set. And now I'm trying a new, <laughs> a new technique for gluing everything down because Maybe you've heard me say in one of my previous videos that I always have such a problem to glue the pieces down exactly how I had laid them out before. Um, so I got a tip from lovely Elaine. Thank you again, Elaine, for that. And she said she's seen other YouTubers work from the top up rather than from the most bottom layer upwards. I don't know if that made any sense right now. But um, to start gluing from the top down, which I found actually very difficult, but the result was much better. So this way I was able to place the items exactly where I wanted them to be. And I love that. So thanks, Elaine. Awesome tip. So I think, yeah, now I'm just going to add one or two more of those wonderful washi pieces. And there we are. That's the finished collage. Love it. And now I'm going to show you some images in some vintage books that I found of some bats because I wanted to use some of those for my spreads as well. So I'm just showing you three different books with a few different images that I thought might work. And I'm showing you the titles of the book because I get questions about which books I use and I forget. And this way you can just look. They're all German books. Um, and but if you want to find them somewhere, maybe you can having that information. So this is a cool one. I'll definitely be using that one. And that book also has um, a few other images that I am considering. So I love this one, the inside of the bat. How cool is that drawing? And then there's that one, which is also a really cool one. That book, I just love that book so much. And I also love this one, which is the inside of the head of a um, woodpecker, I believe. So love that one as well. We'll see if I'm able to use that or not. And this is the third book. And this one I actually ended up not using because I had the feeling the images weren't creepy enough <laughs> for this spread. But we also do have some bats there. I could have fussy cut one of those as well, but it didn't really work with the vibe I was going for. So this is the first image I will be using and I'm using the originals. I am going to tear that page out. I know, I know, I know it hurts, but I'd rather have them in my spreads, these illustrations, because there I will cherish them more than if it stands in my bookshelf. But still, it's not easy tearing these books up. So I'm just using my ruler because um, you can't use your, your, not your scoreboard, your trimmer on these pages because they tear because the, the consistency is too soft. So I've learned that the hard way many times. <laughs> and now I just rip them with the ruler and it's perfect. Anyway, I like the rough edge a lot. So that was a good size for the envelope. And now I also wanted to back it with this cardstock. And I love this um, 
score and trim board it's we are memory keepers because you can just fold it in half it's easier to store and also sometimes you don't need the whole board so if you just have half it's just easier to handle so I just glued that image on top and of course I'm inking it up and then I'm going to be writing about um, I looked up the traditions of Halloween activities and so the ones I'm writing down are trick-or-treating, Halloween costume, carving pumpkins, lighting bonfires, apple bobbing, I don't even know how to say this one right, divination games, no idea what those are, playing pranks, visiting haunted attractions, telling scary stories and watching horror mov movies or hor horror films. And then what I did is I checked off the ones that I was lucky enough to experience. So eight of the ten I was able to experience. I just I'm just missing the lighting bonfires. I just never did that for Halloween. And I don't know what those divination games are. So maybe I've done them. I don't know. And the bottom was a bit too plain for me. So I wanted to fill up that space with some more of those wonderful spooky stickers so I wanted to fill up that whole space so I end up choosing four of those images and the last one is a tooth for good measure <laughs> and as a background just so it's not so plain I'm using again that same Tim Holtz grid washi and now I'm just gonna stick all those down And now I'm just grunging it up a little bit more with my Distress Ink and I'm always using Vintage Photo. So that's the card ready, front and back. Fits perfectly in that envelope and I love how that looks. So that's our second ephemera piece ready to go for our journal spread. <laughs> So this is Alison's lovely journal. I haven't worked in this for a while now. I will link Alison's Instagram below in case you're interested in getting one as well. This is one of my most favorite journals ever and I'm reluctant to fill it up. So I chose this last page which has a um, cardstock from Tim Holtz and I'm just using this black paper clip to clip that envelope on. Um, I think it's supposed to be a little fish. <laughs> it was the only black one I had, so that's why it's a fish. <laughs> no other reason. So, and now I'm trying to decide what else to do and how to attach that other little pocket to the other page. So I wanted to do a full double spread and I had to use this image of the inside of the bat. So that was going to be one of my collage pieces. So I'm making another collage, a bigger one this time. And I had to use this image of the woodpecker. I just had to, it was perfect for this spread. <laughs> so I am again just tearing that. And now I'm trying to see how can I make these pieces fit. They were both quite large for such a small page, but I had to find a solution. So what I did was I decided to tear that piece in two and to glue them in like that so that way the two pages would be connected and it would seem more like one cohere cohesive spread. And so I inked everything up and then I had to, no not yet, I again I'm using this AliExpress grid washi and I wanted to just frame those illustrations a little bit. So putting one piece there and putting another piece on the right. And you will see how instantly it makes those images come out more and give the background more interest at the same time. So 
So adding another grid washi. This is also AliExpress. It's a beige grid. Love that one as well. You can never have enough grid washies, right? <laughs> Just putting that in a few more spots to add a little more interest there. A little variety in the grids. <laughs> And now I believe, yeah, so now I'm trying to decide how I could add that little pocket. I did want both the front and the back to be visible. So I decided to add it as a tip in with some more washi, but I needed another image. So I chose this one to go on the bottom of that page to complete the collage. No, it's not complete yet, but to to extend the collage, let's say that. So I glued that one down, or did I? Not yet. <laughs> and I chose another one of Tim Holtz washies, but not yet. <laughs> um, I actually just filmed this a few hours ago and I already forget my steps. So I added some more washi, more grid washi. Can never have enough grid washi. Just trying to frame the pieces some more. Okay, now I'm gluing that bottom piece down. And I'm gluing the others down as well. And again, I kind of mess up with the placement, but such is life. <laughs> Okay, all the pieces are there. So adding just a few more bits of washi to make it look like the illustrations were glued on with the washi. I love that look. It also gives it a more vintage look like that because of that washi, it looks so vintage. Connecting the two pages again with that washi. And now I'm choosing another one of Tim Holtz's washies that was in one of the two sets as well to attach the tip in. And I'm gonna put that same washi on the outside as well, otherwise it wouldn't hold very well. I'm gonna stick that around to the other side. That's why I was checking if that would work with the other page, but that was fine because it just had an envelope. So that wasn't gonna bother me. So there's a little tip in and now we have this hole there <laughs> or this blank space, which I was not happy with. So I again was looking through those cards that I had printed and trying to find something. And I found this one which was left from the raven that we cut out. So that was a perfect fit for that little spot. And I'm just gonna glue that there. So now the whole page is pretty much filled up. And using yet another one of those Tim Holtz washies from the set, just to add a little bit more diversity interest there's a little close-up love 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 all those layers and all those different washies there and those illustrations oh my god so much in love so that's our Halloween edition I hope you enjoyed this and hope you have a wonderful Halloween have some fun, go have a party or something. And I hope to see you back here in the next video. And um, thank you so, so much for watching. Bye. <laughs>